Okay, how are we doing now, Brad? We got you loud and clear, Al. Coming over the broadcast now. Sounds like we are. Okay, not sure what happened there. Little little technical uh, snafu, but uh, okay, we're back. I uh, hope you guys all like the intro, but uh, anyway, uh, welcome to round three. As Brad was was stating, uh, round three from Golden Port. Brad, happy to have you back after you started off uh, racing the first couple rounds of the uh, series. But a uh, real pleasure to have you back here. I also want to thank uh, uh, Rich Roman while I have this brief opportunity for filling in last week for you. Yeah, great job, Rich. And uh, again, thank you, uh, Al and NAGP TV for giving me the opportunity to get out there. Always fun to mix it up with these GT2 guys. So currently Mikey Monahan on pole. Uh, what we were seeing uh, late in practice was uh, 101 lap times. Expect that to uh, drop probably within the one minute range, but uh, this is uh, this is going to be going to be a very interesting qualifying. A lot of traffic. This track is uh, very short, yet uh, quick at the same time, and uh, quite a few passing opportunities out there, Brad. What do you think? Yeah, you know what? There are a lot of passing opportunities at this track. I think we're going to see quite a bit of it. However. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of different lines can be taken into these corners, and sometimes the fast way around this track are uh, wide apex lines. So uh, we could see quite a few uh, late maneuvers into those corners, and hopefully these guys will keep it uh, keep each other rolling their sights and know where everybody's at on track, and uh, keep it safe also. So it's going to be a good time. So right away, Tiago Canola on pole, last week's winner at Bathurst, carrying uh, a little bit of weight for. Uh, Success Ballast after winning that race last week and uh, right away jumps out to uh, provisional pole. Yeah, on the shorter track, you know, we saw lap times in the 01 uh, 5 range, 1 minute 5 range thereabouts. Uh, qualifying times aren't going to be quite uh, uh, the spread of the race times you'd see in an ordinary uh, longer track. You can expect about 1 second per, uh, per 1 minute 30 uh, lap time. So. I think uh, we could dip into the high one minute range here. I think that'll happen, but uh, don't expect them uh, to go too much lower than that. I wouldn't think, Al. Johnson jumps up to P2. However, Diallo Canola is once again on a screamer. He's up uh, two tenths after sector one. Well, right along with Diallo. And through sector two. It looks like he's going to improve here on his current pole lap. Should see him do uh, dip under the minute mark, and he does with a, uh, oh, I'm sorry, one minute flat, 1.847. It's a great lap. Yeah, Tiago. Yeah, Tiago in a, a good form as usual, Alan. It should be noted uh, with his. Uh, Successes here the last couple weeks, which I'm sure we'll get into. Uh, Tiago is also carrying 30 kilogram, Ellis, so making good speed and with weight on that car, Al. Well, we saw Tiago last season do uh, score s several poles actually with quite a bit of weight on board. So I don't think the weight really affects his uh, performance all that much. As Mikey's using all of the track here. Parsons yeah, I'm about to start his hot lap, currently at P4. Sorry, Brad. No, no, no. I, yeah, I'm really interested in this uh, battle brewing. We've seen some of these practice times uh, by Tiago Canola and Nick Johnston, a couple of our um, faster guys here in the opening rounds this season. Kind of interesting to, to uh, see the pace of these guys here in uh, radically different machines that they're piloting, Tiago Canola and the uh, Porsche of course, and Nick Johnston in the Panos. Uh, two radically different handling machines, but still able to generate good speed uh, around this place. Tiago behind, I mean, I'm sorry, Aaron behind a little bit in sector one. So, so Aaron, uh, at the start of his hot lap, some traffic coming out of the pit lane. That, uh, that could play a factor 
in qualifying here tonight as well as the race. Uh, guys got to really be on their toes exit in that pit lane. Yeah, and you know what? We're already uh, closing in on 15 minutes to go here, so this qualifying is rapidly uh, dwindling down. But these gaps are going to be extremely close given the, uh, the, the short uh, time uh, of each lap. And you know what? This qualifying could be extremely critical, and it could come down to just a single tenth or two, moving you up five, six, ten spots. Who knows? Larson jumps up to P2. We're currently on board with Dave Canavan. And third. Let me just say this, Al. Go ahead. Uh, sorry about that. Having having experience with uh, with Aaron and uh, having the opportunity to drive with him for quite a few seasons, I noticed that Aaron was not taking any practice laps. And uh, it generally is the case when you do not see Aaron out on track before qualifying that uh, he's going to show you some speed. And uh, I think we're seeing it. Keeping his cards uh, close to the vest, as they say. Who is David? A little. A little out of shape, they had a pretty decent lap going, but uh, pulls it into the pit lane. Currently following uh, Marty Uran around. Marty had a good start last week at Bathurst. Had the lead momentarily, but uh, broke a little too deep into turn two at Bathurst, got ahead of Tiago for a brief moment, but uh, gave it right back to him after uh, ran wide into turn two, nearly catching the uh, retaining wall. Yeah, you know, Marty uh, Uren did have a little trouble, he got put back in that race, but came all the way back up to fifth in that uh, event last week, so it was a nice, a nice drive back for Marty Uren, and uh, uh, he's going to want those points by uh, season's end, that's for sure. Marty and Ian uh, reigning uh, GT2 team champions here at NAGP. Marty does not improve, still remains in P7. On board with Kurt and the Gumpert. Uh, I'm not sure you drove this car last week, Brad, with a great showing, finishing seventh, I'm sorry, second in the Gumpert. You managed to run any laps here. Uh, in this particular car this week? You know, I've gotten a few, Al, uh, not too many. I had the opportunity to talk with uh, Curtis and teammate Mike uh, Greatrex, and you know what? I think they're feeling pretty optimistic about uh, this race here tonight. Uh, the car itself is a pretty good performer overall. I think it's going to it's going to be a contender at uh, just about any track that they uh, visit uh, this season. So uh, I think the uh, the season's looking pretty bright for Curtis Gandler and teammate uh, Mike Greatrex, and uh, Thank you, Mike, again, for letting me jump in that ride last week. I uh, had a lot of fun. On board now with Eric Marecki, who was showing some uh, pretty quick lap times there in practice. In the 101 range, currently in P14. That's one of the Mercedes that's lagged out, I believe. That's probably Mike Monahan. Yeah, unfortunately, Mike has been having a few uh, struggles with the, that uh, this season, a little bit last season, but uh, uh, we have uh, maybe some light at the end of the tunnel. He is uh, working diligently to solve some of those problems, and uh, as part of our Thursday night broadcast team, we wish the very best for him. So no improvement for Marecki as we ride along with So Long currently on his outlap. So far from what I've seen, traffic hasn't been too bad for some of these uh, guys, uh, particularly the guys I've been following. I haven't seen any traffic issues, but uh, obviously the track is very busy right now. Well, yeah, it is. Uh, we're talking, uh, of, uh, give me a second here, we're talking 37 uh, pilots out there tonight, and I'd say by and large uh, most of them are on track, but you're right. Uh, so far, I think everybody's been able to uh, to give some room, make sure if they're on an out lap to, uh, to get the, the guys on the hot laps by, and uh, so far, so good. Well, as I mentioned that, so long gets blocked a little bit. Uh, probably should have given him himself a little bit more of a gap there with the cars up ahead, but yeah, this, uh, this ain't going to help him too much. I'm back on board with Tiago, the giant slide into the final corner, turn 10. It's this track has 10 corners. Tiago nearly improves just off 
five hundredths of a second on his pole lap. And uh, Nick Johnson has turned in a nice time there, Al. Tiago still, still going here, hasn't pulled it in, so it's still, uh, still running here, although way behind in sector one. So Nick Johnson, as you mentioned, jumps, jumps to the top of the time sheet with a one minute flat, 4.35. Yeah, nice time, particularly in this uh, Panos Al, which uh, you wouldn't think would be one of the stronger performers uh, at this particular track. But uh, uh, Aaron, then again, in a uh, relatively similar type car in the Viper Competition Coupe, also into the uh, uh, one-minute range. So uh, nice times by both of those uh, drivers and both those cars. Aaron Parsons with uh, the mistake there, spinning the Viper. Very unusual. Uh, really see Aaron make those types of mistakes in qualifying. But obviously he was pushing and sometimes those things happen. On board with David Paul. Yeah, no doubt. Sorry, Hal. Yeah, no doubt Aaron's uh, having to loosen up that uh, Viper at the rear end quite a bit to get to turn around these tight radius uh, corners. So, um, yep, a little spin. So one of the comforts got into the back of Paul. Not sure what that was all about. So it's a tight track, it's a twisty track, there's lots of traffic out there, but you know what, it's a pretty technical track around this uh, uh, this place as well, Al. There's some curves that can really catch you out here, you have to be mindful of uh, where the car's at uh, on track, and uh, you have to drive some uh, some pretty good lines. It's a nice mix mixture of uh, patience and aggression around this place, a lot of fun. with Jens Klempnauer in the McLaren. Jens currently in P15. No improvement for Jens. I'm sorry, Jens. Got an oversteer there. I think a little too much an inside curb. Boatload of traffic up ahead for Jens. I'm sorry, Jens. I'm going to keep doing that. So. I'll probably never get it right. You can always correct yourself. So, yeah, we have that uh, uh, relatively time there, but... Nick Johnston at that uh, one minute five range, uh, but beyond, beyond him, uh, from Tiago on back to about 20th, you're talking about a spread of a second here between all these guys. So, so yeah, the gaps uh, are indeed pretty close. So Jens does not improve. Oh boy, with Aaron Parsons. Aaron remains in P3. Really pushing hard. That Viper's all, all over the place. Just a tremendous amount of traffic on track. So this is going to be a real battle of, uh, of patience out here tonight, Al. Uh, uh, aggression and patience, I guess. Just like uh, having to drive the track lap to lap. These guys are going to have to be dealing with a, a lot of traffic and each other out there and trying to keep a cool head uh, to maintain a good pace lap to lap. One of the Mercedes has a nice job of... Um, Kurt, uh, Aaron, get by. Sorry, Brad, go ahead. No, I was I was done, Al. It's just, uh, like, like I say, it's going to take some patience here for these guys tonight. So no improvement for Aaron. Tiago now just started his hot lap. Mm 
out for tents in sector one. Saw some. Uh, we heard some grumblings about this track when it uh, made its announcement on the calendar. Some guys uh, not too thrilled about racing here. It's such a such a short uh, short circuit, but. Tell you what, some of these tracks that uh, guys expect to be uh, either boring or not so much fun, and turn out to be some of the some of the best uh, some of the best races. Uh, in particular, one track was uh, <laughs> Saxon Ring comes to mind a few seasons back. Not too, not too many people were crazy about that one, but it turned out to be quite a what a spectacular race, so we'll, we'll, we'll find out soon enough. Tiago. Well, it's a... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's great for us, Al. We don't have to drive it. We just get to uh, sit back and enjoy the show, so... Um, I Hey, I'm all for it. Tiago behind four hundredths of a second to Sector 1. Might have been balked a little bit by that uh, Jaguar, but... Uh, except the Jaguar. Tiago. Made that same mistake earlier, so it looks like he's struggling through that part of the track. Meanwhile, Marty Uren has Not jumped it. up to P4 in the Aston. Yeah, indeed he has, Alan. I'm actually a little surprised to see that. Uh, the Aston, also not a car, would expect to be a great performer around here, but obviously Marty's got it uh, pretty well dialed in. A lot of these corners, you can take you know, several different lines going into them, uh, especially that final, final turn 10, the last corner. Some guys, uh, you'll see them uh, take that corner really tight. Other guys, other guys swing wide and try and cut that apex. But for the most part, we've seen, well, uh, from what I've seen, the quick guys have been taking that corner pretty tight. Well, and you know what, Al, that's a, that's a good point. You know, it, it probably does bring some of these uh, different types of cars into play uh, with, with setups. Uh, you can uh, maybe get away with setting up for a lot of uh, loose on entry or uh, loose on ed exit or, uh, or some balance uh, to get through these corners in, in the way that best suits you and your car. And uh, these guys, very skilled, will take advantage of those setup tweaks, uh, which help them get around this place the best. So. So maybe bringing uh, more cars into play here than uh, you know, I thought about at first. All right, you're in down two tenths to sector one. Just a little bit more time in sector two. It's down about three tenths. I believe we'll have enough to Frog Parsons, but we'll see just a sec. Oh, he does, and he jumps up to P2. Not only does he leave Frog Parsons, he jumps up ahead of Tiago. Boy, that last corner is so important around here, Al. Uh, that basically makes up all of Sector 3, that last corner. But uh, really, all these sectors are pretty critical. Um, that last uh, corner perhaps being a little bit more critical than the other sectors. Uh, nice time by Marty. Let's see if Tiago can respond to that lap by Marty. Tiago has been really laying it all out here this last few laps, making a few mistakes. I think he's way off in this particular lap. Well, if he plans on getting back past Marty, let alone Nick Johnston, he's going to have to uh, do it quickly. We're, we're rapidly running out of time. Just three and a half minutes left to go here, Al. This has been a very quick qualifying session. Parsons pulls it into the pits. Yeah, Parsons has run multiple uh, one minute nines, uh, just within thousands of a, a second, basically. He has yet to uh, run in the eights, however, as you can see.
And again, he's got about three minutes uh, or two laps or so worth of, uh, of timed laps to get the, his deal done here. He is on a flyer. He's got a little bit of traffic ahead. And one of the Ferraris immediately behind. This particular corner here, he's going to very tricky. You got to really take it wide to carry as much speed through that second. It's kind of like a double apex, but... Really want to carry as much Indeed, speed I there as you can. One of the most important corners on the track, absolutely. Tiago now behind just one tenth of a second. He's on a good one. And Tiago jumps up to P2. Ooh, by one one thousandth of a second over Marty. Wow, that is close. And we talked about tight gaps. Well, there you go. Can't get any closer you than know, that, we, folks. We, no, you know, we've seen Nick, uh, you know, set some good times in qualifying and then kind of sit on those times here the, the last couple weeks, you know. This guy's got to be careful. Not been around NAGP all too long. These guys, uh... These guys can really jump out of nowhere with some good times. He's going to have to be careful with this stuff uh, here going forward. It could bite him. Yeah, he's pretty much been sitting in the pit lane since he set that pole lap. And he's going to have to stick with it because it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get out and set another lap. So he's, he's done for the night. Oh, and Parsons. So more wheel spin out of that corner. It's not a Tiago. To finish a hot lap. Well, I should say he's off, but it looks like he gave himself a little bit of a gap to the guys ahead, and now he is on a flyer. Tiago is known to uh, come through late here in qualifying, so we may be witnessing a dynamic, uh, uh, incredible lap. We'll soon find out. Well, from what I've seen, he may have a tenth or so in the bag, but I just don't know that he's going to get down to that one minute four range, Al. I'm not seeing it. Now on a tenth in sector one. Sounds like he's off the throttle. Parsons. Behind three tenths. He may jump up a spot here. We'll see. He's about to finish this hot lap. Yep. All comes down to this corner here. It didn't look too good. Nope. Does not improve. Mikey Monahan. So sure he's going to get it in though. Nice lap for Mikey, however. He's currently in, currently in P8 in the Mercedes. And he's off the pace. Qualifying has ended. Me and Joe LaCour, let's see if he can get this lap in before the session ends. He does, but does not improve. So that'll do it. Nick Johnston, third straight pole here at NAGP. Yeah, pretty impressive run, pretty impressive time there, Al, around this uh, this bull ring. Uh, you know, the guy can get out front and uh, kind of do some pace setting here. I think he's, uh, he's obviously going <laughs> to be looking pretty strong again, assuming he can handle the traffic. So Nick also carrying a little bit of weight, 22 kilos, I'm sorry, uh, 10 kilograms of success ballast after finishing third last week at Bathurst. Diago Canola and Marty Yearn, a great lap for Marty. Good showing for him currently in P3. Barely missing out on that uh, P2 start there, Al, by, like you say, one one thousandth of a second. So. Uh, mighty close time there to Tiago.
Currently in qualifying 2, waiting for some guys to rejoin the server. We have currently 37 on track. This is going to be a good one, Al. Can't uh, can't wait to see how this one unfolds. Uh, I haven't uh, I didn't get the opportunity to check much on uh, what kind of fuel strategy we may get tonight. How much fuel these guys will be using, or uh, even a lap count. But uh, uh, this is this is one I uh, been looking forward to the last couple weeks. Well, let's see if we can gather that information for you guys here. Yeah, well, Al is doing that. It should be noted as well that uh, the uh, pit in and pit out, like Al mentioned, but also the pit in around here is uh, can be slightly, slightly hazardous, uh, coming right off the groove and at speed. Um, so uh, something else these guys will want to take a practice pit in or two here in the warm-up session, I'm sure. So max distance is 69 laps. However, being our first time here at Golden Port, not sure if this will end on time or distance. This is something to uh, wait and see. We'll get an idea at around the, the pit stops. We'll get an idea as to uh, how this event will end. But uh, 69 sounds like a lot of laps. So, however, it is a short circuit. So we'll. Uh, We'll wait and see. Well, at a race pace somewhere around a 0.25 with pit stop, something like that. Yeah, I guess we can reckon on some 50 some laps, I suppose. So I got this uh, while we are, are in warm-up. I want to give, say uh, hello to everybody out there watching the broadcast. Andre, JJ, Rabbit Racer, Omar. Thanks guys for uh, for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the shows. did have a couple penalties this week, Jack Ivy uh, with a no qual, some contact last week on lap one, and as well as uh, Laurent Bassman, Laurent is serving, he'll have to uh, serve a drive through First three laps of the race, as well as a total of 60 kilograms worth of ballast due to uh, two separate incidents on track. Kenny Swerve and Mervin also with a no ball tonight. So, I'm sorry, Jack Abbey did not get a penalty. I'm not sure he didn't partake in the in the qualifying. So I'm not sure if Jack is just happened to start in the back. Or Well, might not be a horrible strategy around this place, Al. I'll kind of hang back and uh, see what shakes out up there in front. And uh, give yourself a little distance, maybe, if there's any schmozzles out there, which, of course, we don't expect. Drew Litke as well, uh, having to carry 10 kilograms for her. Uh, it's in her last week at Bathurst. So, Brad, we saw last week uh, Tiago double stint some tires, take a short fill near the end of the race. You think you can do the same? Is this the type of track where you can double stint tires? It seems uh, from the testing I've done it, this track does do a number on tires, so I'm not sure if he'll be able to get away with that in this race. Uh, what are your uh, thoughts? 
Sure. Well, with double stinting tires, you have to consider not only the tire wear, but the amount of time lost on track per lap. Well, uh, you run a lot of laps around this track, and uh, so the time that you give up per lap is going to be more than you would, say, at a spa or uh, even at a Bathurst place like that. So um, I wouldn't think these guys would be thinking about double stinting tonight. But, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when something's worked for you in the past, you, you think about doing it again. That Porsche, of course, does get very good... Uh, tire wear, but I wouldn't expect to see any double stinners here tonight. Well, this is definitely going to be an interesting first set of laps. Turn one in particular. It's a little tricky for these guys, hopefully, to display a great deal of patience here in the opening few laps. And, uh, Limited contact up there. So, so while we have a minute, again, I'm going to run down the championship standings here in GT2. Two rounds we have Tiago Canola in the lead with 39 points. Chris Moses uh, two points back with 37. Parsons four points back with 35. Brad, I think you're you're currently in fourth, but uh, you may be out of it after tonight. And I think I might be slipping down the order yeah. here, Al. Yeah. And Canavan in P5 on the standings with 26 points. Team Championship PMR currently leading the way with 50. Points, adrenaline taxi service at uh, Tiago and uh, Greg Myers currently with second with 47 points. D Brock Dam and GT2 that is Aaron Parsons, John Houston with 42 points. Lead Motorsports, So Long and David Paul in fourth with 36 points. I'm sorry, that's not, that's uh, Christian Hamilton and Canavan in the lead and 05 Motorsports in fifth. That's Paul and This, uh, yeah, and looking at those... Go ahead, sorry. No, and with looking at those standings, Al, a couple things pop out to me. There's a, a bunch of guys you'd expect to see there in the top six. Newcomer Nick Johnston, of course, has shown great speed, but hasn't had the results yet. Still sits in seventh. Uh, Solung, Esteban Palacio, uh, David Poole a little bit uh, further back than he'd like, but Marco Connie's there as well. This has been a really, so far, surprising season in the, uh, the competitive nature we're having uh, beyond the top six or seven here. These guys are really having to, to fight for some of these, uh, these places uh, uh, here in the, the middle of the pack for these points. Uh, it's been exciting. I expect that to carry through here the rest of the season as well, Al. Well, another... Uh implication here tonight is the competition index so that's going to be a big factor here you're going to see uh, a lot of guys potentially finishing a uh, lap or two or more down so guys uh, battling for that competition index prize are going to have to uh, do what they can to stay on the lead lap Yeah, that's right. Of course, that uh, prize goes to uh, the winner of most distance traveled over the course of the season. So, uh, tallied in total kilometers, and uh, boy, you know, you lose a lap or two, and you could be out of the running for that thing pretty quickly. So, uh, yeah, keeping it on track is a, a nice prize to have, Al. With warm-up completed... Moving to the race right now. And in doing so, we'll run down the starting order here tonight. We have 38 guys on track uh, for this little uh, bull ring here tonight. Starting on pole for the third straight race, Nick Johnson. Second, Tiago Canola. Third, Marty Uren. Aaron Parsons, fourth. Dave Canavan, fifth. Another David, David Bull in sixth, Sol Lung in seventh, Mike Monahan will start eighth, Esteban Palacio will start ninth, and Ian Jolicor on limited practice starts tenth. Christian Hamilton, eleventh, Chandler, twelfth, Chris Moses, a disappointing thirteenth, Lauren Fassman, fourteenth, and Simon Goodwin, fifteenth. Lou Mascarelli will start it in sixteenth, David Rowley in seventeenth, Jens Klempnauer will be starting 18th. Eric Marecki is in 19th. And Johnny Lugnuts rounds out our top 20. 
21, Kevin Miller, 22nd, Greg Myers, Mike Gatrix, uh, 23rd, Sam Rolfe, 24, Marco Connie, 25. Salem Montgomery Jr. starts 26th, Jared Keene starts 27th, Michael Richard starts 28th, John Houston is in 29th, and Gup Douglas starts 30th. 31st, Drew Lidgear, 32nd, Story, 33rd, Chuck Carter, Bjorn Heyman, 34th, George Alba, 35th. Tony Atkins starts 36th, John Wathen will take 37th, Jack Ivey is in 38th. So there you have it. Follow Nick Johnston as we wait for the drop of the green flag here tonight. What's your prediction, Brad? Well, this is a uh, this is an any. You know what? I am going to go with a couple guys not on the front row. Uh, look for either Marty Urin or Aaron Parsons, guys that uh, really are able to maintain pace and consistency. Look for those guys tonight. I'm going to have to go with uh, I'm going to go with Dave Canavan here tonight. I think he's going to come through. As the lights are going oh. red, waiting for the start of GT2 here at Golden Port, and we're on our way. Nick Johnson with finally a great start. Leaves the field into turn one. However, Tiago may have a look at him going into two. Looks like Johnson's going to hang on to that position. Really clean through the field so far, Al. Great start. Uh, sorry, except for Gregory Myers, who has become beached. Yeah, Jolly Court battling the two Mercedes. Going to try and take a run on those guys. Greg Myers has lost his rear wing. Another disappointing race here for Greg. He suffered some problems last week at Bathurst, and he's struggling here again tonight. Maybe game over for Greg. Oh. Boy, and this is a team you marked down uh, preseason, Al, as one of the favorites going into that team classification, and uh, he is not helping that team out at the moment. Tough luck for Gregory. I'm over with Marty Urin as he's hanging on to this battle with the top two. Looks like we might have just lost Greg. Al, quick update, Laurent Weisman has taken a DNF, not sure what happened to Laurent, but out of this race. Canola for the time being hanging on to Nick Johnson, but it looks like Johnson is starting to gap Canola a little bit as they head into the final corner. Yeah, judging by those qualifying times, it kind of makes sense that he would. But again, uh, we've got an hour to go here, Al, so uh, the proof is in the pudding. We'll see how he holds up. He's got one of the BMWs, Z4s, in the pit lane. Hey, Paul. Well, I was expected, Al, the gaps. Go ahead. As expected, the gap's still incredibly close here throughout the field, though. Dave Ball and so long running 6th and 7th, respectively. Yeah, David Pohl not exactly uh, uh, overwhelmed with the performance of that Audi R8 yet this season, but uh, showing good pace here tonight. Esteban Palacio uh, currently in 8th. His teammate Mikey Monahan right behind in 9th. Ian Jolacor into the top 10 and that who as he has a bit of a moment runs a little wide on exit back on it Kurt Chandler gonna have a run on Ian Kurt looking to take yeah, the inside really nice. looks like Kurt may have him these two are side by side and uh, looks like ooh, the power of that Aston not allowing Kurt to get by Ian's gonna maintain that position it was a nice start for Curtis Chandler. Picked up a couple spots there in the early going, so a uh, good start for him here tonight. Almost in the top ten. Chris Moses continues to run where he started. Looks like he's got a little front-end damage on that BMW. Simon Good 
Goodwin currently in 14th as the gap has increased a little bit. Johnny Lugnuts is uh, currently in 15th as Drew Litke having a look on the inside of Johnny, but thinks better of it. Right on Johnny's tailpipe. Johnny looks like he's got a little rear end damage, so someone might have Johnny's rear bumper a visit early on, really close through the final corner. And Johnny looks like he's going to hang on to that position. Kevin Miller and Jared Keane, these guys in the middle of this fight for the last points paying position here early on. Marco Carney back in 19th, probably a little disappointing with his showing after a Great two last two weeks at Road America and Bathurst. Early in 19th, definitely not where it wants to be. Indeed, and not really a great qualifying effort uh, for Marco here tonight as well. Well, Mascarelli back on track currently uh, after a week off, currently in 20th. Salem Montgomery Jr. in that Jag. And real up close, personal with Mascarelli as these two battling it out early on. Brian Story feeling the heat from Chuck Carter. Tony Atkins in the Mustang up to 24th after starting pretty far back. Around 32 I believe or even further back. So Tony looking pretty decent here early on. Jens Klepp now we're back at 25th. Cup Douglas, 26. He's going to want to get up into the points. He's going to have to, if he uh, wants to help out that PMR cause here for the team championship. Michael Richard, currently at 27th. Sam Rolf battling Richard for 28th. As we have, ooh, as Rolf spins it, and it looks like Jens might have spun it. Ivy coming up on this little incident here. He gets around Rolf. And Great Tricks back at 30th. Marecki 31st. Not sure what happened to Marecki. He's looking pretty uh, pretty good there in qualifying, but he's falling back. Ooh, as we have some more carnage here in the back. Jens is well into the, to the beach. I'm not sure what happened there. We just caught the tail end of that. George Alba picks up that position and is currently in 32nd in that Jaguar. Bjorn Heyman back at 33rd. Klebnauer already getting lapped by the leaders. And Wolfen back at 35th struggling yet again here at Yeah, strange to see uh, Wappen's struggles continue just a little bit, but uh, uh, no doubt he will uh, bounce back from that. Uh, you know, running through the field and some of the problems these guys are having, it's no different for uh, the ones at the front here. These guys are uh, uh, really trying to push as much as they can here. have quite a battle going on for the third position, and uh, boy, just the smallest mistake from these guys are going to equate to big time loss. Uh, boy, you throw it off track around here, you're fit to lose about 20 spots by the time you get out of the kitty litter. Parsons having a look on the inside of Marty. Marty had a giant slide going into turn one. Almost lost the car, but recovered nicely. Hung on to the position. And this has been quite a fight here. Aaron was pushing Marty quite a bit uh, in the, the opening laps here. Uh, fell back a little bit. Uh, but David Canavan started applying pressure, and now you see that they've all come back together. We still have uh, Johnston in sight. Johnston has gap canola a little bit, but really has yet to check out. So these guys are all still with a chance here. As they come up across, uh, come upon some lap traffic. It looks like Sam Rolf in the Panos. Yeah, Sam, real experience. Oh, and Marty uh, again He's loses it in turn one. And we have some serious contact. Looks like Canavan got into it. Marty has fallen back to 14, so we saw the same exact thing happen to Marty the previous lap, and he's got some heavy damage to that Aston. So it looks like he had to really... Yeah, and up. I like the contact. 
ahead. Uh, yeah, and unlike the contact he had last week at Bathurst, Al, this is going to hurt him way more than it did there, I should uh, suspect. So Parsons actually got into it with Marty as well, so he was not immune to that spin. So Marty, uh, looks like Marty had to check up quite a bit for that. Uh, Painos that was ahead, it looks like that was Rolf, and in doing so really lost the rear end of that car in the break. That's a lot. Well, uh, in the meantime... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say... In the meantime, I was just going to give a... I was going to give a quick update to our George Alba fan. Unfortunately, George Alba has retired with a DNF uh, just recently, so bad news there. But don't tune out. Plenty of good racing from these guys coming. So due to that incident, uh, David Pohl, Esteban, Sol Lung have all moved up a couple positions. Dave Canavan was unlucky there. He was running uh, fifth and has dropped back to seventh. guys are already coming up so uh, up upon some lap cars already here on lap 10 yeah and we had a shout out uh, from our Michael Richard fan it should be noted uh, Michael Richard had a very fine race last week at Bathurst just missing the points finished in 22nd Michael Richard currently running 24th in this race Not sure if Canavan's got any type of. Uh, he had that contact with Marty, so I'm not sure how that's affecting his car at the moment. Looks like he's hanging on there with uh, the battle, uh, especially with so long. He's really given so long all he can all he can handle at the moment. Yeah, hard to say, Al. Uh, I can tell you that his last time lap after that contact was an 03 flat. Um, so previously in the O2 flat range, but uh, hell, uh, just flat rattle a guy that type of contact. So uh, see if he gets back on pace. Mikey Monahan has fallen back a little bit to 11th. Kurt Chandler has moved up into the top 10, right behind Chris Moses, who's running at ninth. Yeah, Chris Moses put a nice pass on Curtis Chandler for then the 10th position, but you see both have moved up one position. Chris Moses to 9th, Curtis Chandler to 10th. Simon Goodwin also hanging on yeah, those here as well, currently in P12. Yeah, indeed. Nice run for Simon uh, after not uh, lackluster qualifying performance. Uh, yeah, as the front two have, uh, begin to gap themselves just a little bit. Uh, that fight for third still raging pretty good. Marty Urin still remains at 14th after that uh, incident there in turn one. Johnny Lugnuts has moved up into the points, currently at 15th, and Jared Keene is all over the back of him in 16th. Yeah, quite a fight going on there. Of course, uh, we talk about Marty Urin and some of his troubles with his contact. You know, it's uh, uh, he will pro probably have the speed on a lot of these guys, but getting by on this uh, twisty track is going to be uh, quite a chore for him over the rest of this race. Right along with Michael Richard, who's having quite a battle here with Gup Douglas. signs of some contact on that BMW of Richard, so looks like he's been mixing it up here early on in this race. Well, another car that I wouldn't have quite expected maybe to uh, to place with a, a super showing around here would be that the Mercedes piloted by Esteban Palacio, but he's doing a great job in that thing. Currently running fifth and really giving David Poole all he can uh, handle there for the fourth spot. So the gap between Nick Johnston and Tiago is now two seconds.
Yeah, Nick Johnston just this last lap turning in a 022, where all his previous laps were in the 01 range compared to uh, Tiago's mostly 02 laps. So, a little bit of pace on Tiago at this point. So we're going to have to keep an eye on Nick. I'm not sure how that Panos is going to handle late in this stint, whether the tires are going to hold up or if he may start losing time to Tiago here. Yeah, that's a really good point, Al. I'm wondering the same thing. Uh, no doubt he's going to have to get that rear end pretty loose on that Panos to get it through some of these corners, so the, that will bear watching. Esteban Palacio, Al, quick update, has gotten by David Poole for that fourth spot. Now we just picked that up, and uh, Esteban Urena is having a great race. gotten past so long for P6, so Canavan working his way back up through the field now. So, a quick update, Curtis Chandler has uh, been mired in a little bit of traffic, uh, had a little off or two. Uh, Cur Curtis Chandler now running 12th. Mikey Monahan is falling back to 13, so Mikey. <coughs> it looks like Mikey had some. He's got some damage to the front of that Mercedes. Not sure if he's got into it. Uh, with some lap traffic. Yeah, well, that's uh, that battle's really a. Uh uh, Rager, Ben Ray, and uh, Marty Uren will be looking to get past those guys, uh, trying to claw his way back up uh, through the field here. Meanwhile, Kevin Miller has worked his way up into the points now in 16th with Marco Conti immediately behind. Marco just out of the points at the, at the moment. Indeed, another great showing for Kevin Miller. Now between Tiago and Nick is now under two seconds. Yeah, a couple of uh, mid-02 laps here for Nick Johnston the last couple laps with Tiago running close to 02 flats. In fact, running amazingly consistent laps in the 021 range. Uh, so gaining some time currently. Yeah, and uh, while that's going on, David Canavan has clawed up to David Poole and is starting to give him the business for that fifth position. So as we ride along here with Nick, gotta keep an eye on his lap times. As looks like he's starting to run now in the 102s. Could be that his tires are starting to go and giving up some time now to Tiago. Yeah, and I think Tiago smells some blood in the water, Al. Tiago has uh, improved uh, on his uh, previous, uh, current, his recent laps here. He dipped back into the 01s. I think Tiago smells some blood in the water. So saw Michael Rashard with an off. Gotta really give these guys credit. Most part doing a good job letting the leaders by. It's never uh, it's never an easy thing to deal with this type of traffic, but especially here, I want to commend those guys.
Uh, yeah, of course, uh, all these guys, very skilled uh, in AGP, the veterans for the most part, they're uh, going to make sure that uh, they get those leaders through uh, cleanly at their earliest uh, possibility. Tough track to do it on, though. As we continue to suffer from some attrition here tonight, we've lost quite a few guys. Yeah, unfortunately we have, and uh, uh, the nature of the track, the shorter track, we, we will see uh, quite a bit of lap traffic, as mentioned already. But, uh, you know, it's all about uh, where you're running relative to the guys around you, and, uh, and that's going to be the focus of our pilots here tonight, focusing on that next position, wherever it happens to be at. On board with Canavan. Ooh, I'm not sure if that's... It's not Parsons, it looks like it's Houston. I saw that Viper off, I thought that might have been Aaron Parsons, but meanwhile, Canavan giving their pull all he can handle, and Paul really giving it to Esteban. Esteban got by, but has not been able to, to gap Paul at all. This Paul is hanging you know, on to the back of Esteban. Yeah, Esteban was actually clear and pulling a, pulling a small gap. I think Esteban has made a little mistake here and has uh, put those guys back together. Uh, you know, that, that's going to be a theme for tonight. That's going to happen quite a bit. Small mistakes are going to equate to a, a pretty big time lost or gained. So Simon Goodwin now all over the back of Chris Moses. As Ian Jolicor in ninth, leading this particular pack of cars. Yeah, indeed, and it should be mentioned, we haven't talked about it much, but Simon Goodwin is making a nice charge through this field, uh, and obviously has the pace at the moment on uh, not only Chris Moses, but Ian Jolicor as well. So, uh, Simon Goodwin, a great run. Hamilton quick now update up to Al 11. on that. Go ahead. Yep, sorry, quick update. Final points. Had it, but Marco Conti has gotten by for that 16th spot. Well, I'm going to go out and say it, Brad. Please do. I don't think uh, this is going to be tough for Nick. Nick's going to, we think he's going to have to take more fuel than Tiago will, and as well as tires. So I think he's going to lose quite a bit of time to Tiago in the pit lane. And uh, it's going to be a tough win, uh, tough challenge for Nick to, uh, to win this race. I mean, he's, I would think he'd have to uh, get out in front of uh, Tiago a little, a little more than he is to uh, come away with this victory. But. Yeah, Tiago has put in a couple bad laps here. Uh, I don't know if that was a cause of uh, lap traffic or what have you, but uh, I have to think that uh, Tiago uh, certainly is not giving up that much pace to Nick Johnston, and uh, it's not going to take too much less fuel on Tiago's part. Uh, be able to jump and if Tiago does get in front I think it, it will be extremely difficult for Nick um, but you know at, at the moment it is looking like it could be a two horse battle yeah as Aaron Parsons has faded quite a bit from those two guys out front Parsons currently 10 seconds behind that, that battle for the lead well you know he is a little bit off but he is also running third um, of course already uh, very up there in championship points, but you got to give it to the guy. This Viper uh, it was not an easy car to get around this track, and he's doing a great job there. Um, uh, solidly in third, kind of by himself. Good job, Aaron. Meanwhile, it looks like Esteban may have had uh, an incident. He's fallen back to seventh. So long has gone ahead. David Pohl has gone ahead, and Canavan has gone ahead of them all. So Canavan currently in P4. As we near the halfway mark of this race. 
boy, so long there in sixth position. Uh, you mentioned him out. He has really come on here the last guy, and so long has actually gotten past teammate David Poole. Uh, I think David Poole has had an off, and that's going to allow Esteban Palacio as well uh, through as well. Uh, but uh, but going back to so long, well, here he is now in fifth position. So. A guy who's really come on strong here the last couple seasons. A guy starting to make some noise for uh, consistent top five finishes. Absolutely. Sol has uh, shown some great praise both in GT1 and GT2. So I, I don't think Sol's too far off his first uh, NAGP victory. Yeah, one of these one of these races he'll get his because uh, he really has uh, come around. Boy, sure came close last season there at uh, Autopolis, Al, or Autopolis, however you say it, uh, there in the wet. That was a, a great, uh, exciting drive to watch. So it looks like some traffic on the way at Tiago. That lead has now, for Johnson, has now uh, increased to two seconds. Yeah, Tiago had a uh, horrible lap there um, last time around. Not sure what happened there. I'm going to assume lap traffic, so uh, it's going to play a part. Meanwhile, Chris Moses has gotten past Ian Jolicoeur for the eighth spot. Jolicoeur now doing all he can to keep Simon behind. Yeah, Chris couldn't quite open up a gap big enough for Simon to sport through as well, but... Simon's going to be pretty dogged. Uh, he's looking sharp here, Al. Liking what I'm seeing. Looks like he might have given Ian a little nudge there going into that corner. A little hello. I am here. I'm ready to do business. So we're looking at lap 25 now, Al. Uh, these guys, I should think, would be uh, preparing to get into the pits here before too long. And uh, um, boy, speaking of uh, small mistakes out on track, you know, it's not going to take too much of a mistake uh, in or out of the pits here for these guys to lose big chunks of time to each other as well. So these guys will have to be on top of their game. Salem Montgomery Jr. currently at 18th. He's uh, not too far off the. Uh Final points paying position if he keeps it uh, keeps it together the way things are going here he may find himself up into the points. Yeah, indeed. And a quick update on uh, another guy into the back of the points, Marty Uren, still in 14th, was briefly up there to 13th. Not sure it happened, but he gave up a spot to Mike Monahan. Currently in 14th is Marty Uren. Tony Atkins and Michael Rashard going at it. Ooh, and Rashard. Has a bit of a moment and loses that position to Atkins. Looks like Atkins runs a little too hot into that final corner and gives that position right back. Hang in there, Tony. And Tony looks like he's parked it. Tough break for Tony. Oh, that's too bad. Jack Ivey. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, running in currently 27, 26 now. Johnny Lucknuts was in the points, not sure what happened, if he's already pitted or what, but he's currently in 28th. John Wathen is called in a night. So we have to keep an eye on Nick here. We expect him to, to be pitting uh, in the next lap or two. Yeah, and it has to be said, Nick has settled down uh, quite a bit here. His uh, lap times are running currently in the 
two, two, oh, 2.02.3 range, but uh, the pretty consistent laps. He was a little shaky there, it looked like, for a while, but uh, settling down and uh, maintaining that gap back to uh, second place, Tiago Canola. So Nick stays out. And I believe Jared Keene has come in for regular service out. Parsons into the pit lane. Heavy on the brakes. Cup Douglas in the pits. Ooh, a Canavan! Into the pit lane uh -oh. and catches the wall and loses his front clip, so that's going to cost him quite a bit of time there. Mascarelli into the pits. Yeah, exactly. Exactly as mentioned, Al, that the pit entrance is dicey. So Canavan. Esteban Palacio out with the DNF, Al. Oh, what a shame. Not, don't know what happened to Esty, but he's out of the race. Ian in. Moses is in. Esteban, of course, all the way up there to fifth position at one point. A tough break there. Marty Uren has pulled it into the pit lane. It should be noted as well, Esteban Palacio up there, seventh in championship points. He's going to take quite a hit. Johnston has stayed out. Is this uh, are we seeing a uh, uh, who's gonna blink first here? Is Nick gonna try and stay out as long as he can? You know, I suspect Al that uh, he has some particular type of strategy in mind, and he's just running to that strategy. Um, I don't think there's any type of a game gamesmanship or or playing off one another. I think these guys are just running to a particular strategy. in the pit lane. Tiago will assume the lead. As, as yeah, and of course last week it worked out very well for Tiago, uh, running that long stint. Uh, he will be taking less fuel on board, so uh, this, this uh, pit stop for Nick Johnson could decide this race. Pit stop rotation is so important. All these guys in. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this uh, rotation shakes out. Mikey Monahan and Kurt Chandler have stayed out. Okay, Kurt Chandler is going to take over at second spot of this race. Mikey Monahan at third. And Johnson still in the pit lane. And Marco. Pulls it into the pits. Montgomery yep, Jr. Five stayed guys, out. Four guys still on track. Have yet to pit. Tiago Canola, Curtis Chandler, Mike Monahan, Salem Montgomery. Johnston resumes the race in P5. Aaron Parsons. Looks like he had a great stop. He's uh, right behind Nick. So Nick with another long stop. Yeah, I think uh, Aaron Parsons did pick up some time there on pit stop. Uh, you know. If he had gotten by, it w he would have been in better shape than uh, to come out behind, but uh, still in all, uh, any seconds you can gain uh, are good seconds. So Monahan we talked about a little past. bit here, Al. Sorry, Mikey Monahan has gotten past Kurt Chandler, but both those guys have stayed out. Go ahead, Brian. 
Yeah, we talked a little bit about uh, the lap time you give up versus uh, uh, the, the tires you coming in for the pits and staying out. Tiago Canola is not setting very good laps relative to uh, what Nick Johnson is going to be setting here. This is not a time when uh, I think his, his long tire strategy may pay off for him here. This is uh, looking to be a danger zone. Follow along with Tiago. We'll have to see if he decides to pit this lap. Maybe he sees his performance dropping considerably. Well, you hope so, Al. Uh, with the amount of laps, you, time you give up per lap every time diving into those pits, you just can't make up for it uh, with a short fill. So, yeah, he's going to have to be very careful. I would think that he should be actually coming in here before too long if he wants to uh, retain a chance at this race. Mikey Monahan continues out on track as well. And Salem Montgomery currently running P3 has also stayed out. Yeah, not this, not this time around. Um, yeah, very interesting here. I'm, uh, don't know if Tiago has got it figured right this time or not, but uh, continuing to give up some ground uh, on track uh, by lap time to Nick Johnson. Ooh, and Nick Johnson has a moment. Ooh, he almost pulled it into the pits. Oh, Nick and Salem, Salem pulls it into the pits. He's He's got a pit anyway, so that's not too bad, but Nick. Well, that's going to help Tiago. Yeah, it will definitely help Tiago as of course Nick it. nearly entered the pit lane, and once he goes in, he's going to, he'd have to drive through, but he managed to keep it from actually going past the, uh, the line there. Boy, Nick Johnston, so much pace, uh, yet to come away with a win, and, uh, Boy, it all of a sudden looks a little dodgy for him. He's going to have to do some uh, serious work here, uh, this second stint. So that's allowed Parsons to get by Nick as Parsons has a little bit of a moment there onto the grass. Yeah, well that had to give uh, Aaron some pause. Um, I didn't see what happened, but I'm sure that would have affected him in some way. It had to take some type of evasive action for Nick there. Boy, that really helped out Tiago. I think uh, what may have happened there was Salem was pulling into the pits and uh, Nick was holding that tight line and had to really check up for uh, Salem who was pulling and slowing for the pit lane, so. Well, Aaron Parsons now dipping well into the 01, some of his fastest lap tire race, and now uh, it's possible Tiago could be having some trouble with Aaron Parsons. Tiago now has the field a lap down. Well, it could very well be another case of uh, just a splash of fuel, Al. He could be going for that strategy again. Yeah, he, he could be on that, uh, oh. that double stint tire action. I think you might be right. I'll have to check that gap to... Uh Caps a lap, so <laughs> as Parsons currently in P2. P2, it's really tough to say how this might work out. The pit lane is uh, relatively short, but uh, but the, the the lap time is also very short, Al. Uh, so this is a uh, this is becoming very <laughs> interesting. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here, but uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm wondering. He and Joel Lecour has jumped ahead of Chris Moses, and now is up to P6. Chris Moses, uh, yeah. seventh, and Simon Goodwin has jumped up to P8. So Simon having a nice run here tonight. 
Chandler has fallen back to ninth. Well, I should say he's back in the top ten. And Christian Hamilton as well in the top ten. Yeah, you know, I think the, there's some guys that really lost out. Well, of course, David Canavan had his problems getting into the pits. Uh, Mike Monahan apparently had a bad stop. Uh, some of these guys have filtered back a little bit, allowing some other guys to move up. Uh, Simon Goodwin should be noted is in eighth. So uh, Simon's run, uh, good run continues here tonight. So Monahan currently running in 11th, Keen 12th, Marty Yaron up to 13th. Conti has worked his way up to 14th. Cup Douglas now in the points, being followed by Canavan, who, uh, as you mentioned, had a, a serious moment going into the pit lane, losing his front clip, man. It seemed like it took forever for them to repair that damage. He was in there for quite some time. Actually, yeah, Ferrari had great pace. He's actually got, um, but uh, but that's. He's actually got David Pohl coming up on. Coming up from behind, so Paul looking to looking to put Canavan a lap, another lap down. Kevin Miller just outside the points at 17th. Ognat's currently running 18th. Salem rejoins at 19th. So Salem, Salem is having a nice run. He's not, he's not too far off these guys uh, for that last point position. So we'll have to keep an eye on Salem. Sale has been getting progressively better after each race. Yeah, indeed, Al. So, at about 25 laps, Tiago will be giving up about a second a lap, a little bit more now. Um, so you're looking at 30 seconds there, plus pit time, plus a splash of fuel. Um, boy, I, this, this could be quite close. The the entrance, the pit lane itself is relatively short, but the, the pit out um, does add a few seconds. Uh, but uh, in any event, Aaron, being very cagey, experienced driver, uh, likely knows exactly what's going on at this point and is really pushing now, uh, running very consistent laps in the high old ones, uh, some of his fastest laps of the race. Canola, meanwhile, his laps are now in the high 102 couple 103s yeah indeed Al so uh, so giving up a little over a second a lap at this point just over 15 minutes remaining in this event you know and Nick Johnston hasn't quite gone away yet uh, you know you figure He's some 10 seconds or so uh, behind Aaron at this point, but rattling off uh, only 017s here the last four or five laps. So uh, he's up on the wheel as well, trying to regain as much as he possibly can. Of course, we see him have great speed coming from uh, just behind the lead. Uh, he's been in that position a lot this season. Yeah, really incredibly consistent 017s from Nick Johnston. Well, even if Tiago does do another double stint, I don't see his lap times uh, seeing as they are now. They're not going to improve, I don't think. And at the pace uh, Aaron's going, it's going to be very close to the end here. Yeah, I, uh, I'm leaning at this moment, uh, and I may correct myself, so uh, so take that uh, what you will. I'm giving the edge to Aaron Parsons. And Parsons is closing in on Tiago, about to take, uh, looking to get his lap back from Tiago. He's not that far off. So total in and out time will probably be close to a minute. Yep. In the pit lane. He's uh, well, I... Give or take. Yeah, I'm not sure it's going to be quite that long, but uh, yeah, it's, it might be. If it's a, if it's a minute, then Tiago's cooked.
Wow, in the meantime, Al, quick update, you know, So Lung now uh, up to fourth position. Well, so Lung's a uh, great drive here and great uh, start to this season. Is, uh, is looking, and hey, seventh in, uh, tied for seventh in overall championship points. So is, uh, is looking strong, making some noise this season. His teammate David Pohl running in fifth has gotten past Canavan, who's a lap down the pole. That's kind of... Now he stings, yep. Meanwhile, Moses and Joel Lacour, this battle has been raging the whole race. Moses has a look on the yeah, inside sure and he makes the pass on Joel Lacour. Great job by Moses as Ian's gonna, not going to give it back. Uh, let him have it easily, so you're going to see... And if he can hang with Chris here, he's gonna take every opportunity he can to get that position back. <laughs> Yeah, surely, and I'm a, actually a little surprised. Uh, Chris Moses appears to me to be a little bit more off the pace than I would have expected. Ian Jolicor a little bit more on it. I uh, don't know that he got much practice for this race, uh, did Ian Jolicor, so I'm a little surprised to see uh, this speed uh, so close relative to each other, Chris Moses and Ian Jolicor. Still in all, though, good, uh, good positions to be in 6th and 7th at this point. Uh, Chris Moses, of course, uh, Third, I believe, in our overall championship. Uh, scratch that second. To, of course, Tiago Canola. Kurt Chandler has gone by Simon Goodwin for eighth, so Kurt in the top ten. Continues to improve. Christian Hamilton, uh, these three guys continue to run. Uh, Uh, Aaron Parsons. Sorry, Al. Aaron Parsons has gotten by Tiago Canola, so he's back on that lead lap. Just caught the tail end of that, so it looks like Canola. Probably didn't give uh, Parsons too much of a fight there for that spot. Oh, and he had the pace on him, so. Oh, I think the more Canola stays out here, the worse it's going to get for him. Yeah, Tioga, uh, Tiago had stabilized his uh, lap time somewhat. Uh, they're getting back into the uh, O2s, mid O2s, but had a couple disastrous laps here the last couple. Um, Aaron Parsons now in the low O2s consistently. I think if Tiago does decide to take tires, as you said, he would be cooked. Oh, certainly, yeah. No, he's not going to be taking tires at this point. Uh, it's only going to be a splash, uh, for sure. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I'm looking at Nick Johnson. Nick Johnson now making some inroads back on Aaron Parsons, uh, lap to lap. So, uh, now rattling off some three or four tenths a lap on Aaron Parsons. We just picked up uh, Nick, and Nick is closing in on Canola as well, so. Better hope this strategy for Tiago pays off because it looks like, from our perspective, uh, both Nick and Parsons would get out, uh, move up uh, a position over these. Uh, well, I still think it's going to be close. Working lap now 45. Um, Boy, it's still going to be close. However, if I was Tiago at this point, you might want to make sure you can get back out ahead of the guy. Um, you might want to pit early enough to where you're you're sure you can get back out ahead of him, just in case it does come down to the end. You could be out in front and have to make the guy make the pass. So even if you are in the double stint, uh, maybe a good idea to come in a little bit earlier than you absolutely have to. Well, it looks like uh, Joel Lacour has gotten past Moses. Not sure what happened there, but. Chris is back in seventh. Oh, well. So it could have been a mistake by Chris or perhaps some contact. I don't see any damage on Chris's car, but. Right. As a slowed up a little bit here by an Aston, unfortunately. 
Meanwhile, Kurt and Simon continue to do battle. Really close there with the lap car of Johnny Lugnuts. Ooh, Simon gonna hang on to it. No, he goes out into the weeds. And that's gonna allow Christian to get past. So Christian, I'm sorry, uh, Simon getting into it with one of the lapped uh, Lamborghinis. I think that was Lugnuts. Uh, well, from looking at that, I don't think Lugnuts really knew. Simon continues to push. I don't think Lugnuts knew which way Simon was going. He gave him some room, but uh, had a little bit of contact, which uh, knocked Simon off track. Meanwhile, Mikey continues to run at P11 now all over the back of Simon. Yeah, it looks like Nick Johnson will be uh, very shortly here getting back on the lead lap as well. Uh, I might have to re uh, reevaluate uh, this uh, Thiago Canola run here as laps wind down. Uh, I just I think uh, think he might be okay. Well, the rule states he does have to uh, come into the pits, so he may not take any fuel. He may just. Yeah, yeah, that's of course that's, that's another possibility. Well. Yeah. But Nick Johnson has gotten past Canola and is back on the lead lap. Yeah, David Poole, uh, quick update, has gotten back by teammate Sol Lung for the fourth position. That he has, Sol in fifth. Not sure if that was team orders or what, but. Uh, given how far back Sol is, I gotta think that that was some type of mistake or off on Sol's part. While Mikey and Simon continue to do battle for that 10th spot, Marty has worked his way up to 12th, Keen up to 13th. Canavan now in the points in 14th. My pick for tonight to win it has uh, not come through. Connie, 15th. And Gup Douglas in the final points paying position in 16th. Kevin Miller in Houston, 17th and 18th. Lugnuts, 19th. Montgomery Jr., 20th. Mascarelli, Mascarelli I should say, in 21st. There's Michael Richard, currently in 22nd. Got Drew Litkia right behind in 23rd. Mike Great Tricks in 24th, nearly gets run right into there by Moses, who had to check up for him pretty, pretty heavily. Uh, Story 25th, Ivy in 26th. Chuck Carter. Tony Atkins, John Wathen, all in the garage. Well, regardless of how this race turns out, Al, uh, with uh, Tiago at, at the lead and who's going to finish where, Nick Johnson has a kind of reeled in Aaron Parsons here, and I believe we'll have a go at him here in the, the final laps for that position between those two, wherever they happen to finish up. We got just over By five the, minutes remaining here on this one. working lap 51. And another quick update, Chris Moses has gotten back past Ian Jolicor for that sixth position. Tiago remains out on track. And you're right, Johnston has really closed up on on Parsons as uh, Johnston now gets by one of the Mustangs, I believe that's Kevin Miller. So Parsons does have his hands full, for sure, now with, uh, with Johnson right on his tail. So 
we haven't really seen Nick uh, in this type of a fight with, uh, with someone like Aaron now. It'll be interesting to see how he tries to set up uh, set up Parsons here to try and make a pass. Yeah, it's interesting. Similarly powered cars. Uh, obviously, the Panos is uh, getting through the corners a bit better. No question about that. But uh, uh, Aaron will make it very difficult here with the uh, laps closing in. And of course, uh, both want to maintain good pace. Depending on what happens with Tiago, they still want to keep Tiago's into the pits. Out. He is stopping in the box. And he's away. I, I think he may be able to do it, depending on how many laps are left. Oh, he's yeah, going to be well out ahead. He's, yeah, some 20, 18 seconds, something like that. I think that's going to be plenty of time. As Parsons now just, and Johnson now on the final corner exiting the first straight. And Tiago's so done it again. 13 seconds the gap. Yeah, 13 seconds the gap with, uh, who knows, only three, four, five laps to go here, Al. Yeah, just over, just under three minutes left in this one. So I don't think uh, I think Tiago's put another pulled another uh, rabbit out of his hat here tonight. Boy, and it was another squeaker, that's for sure. Uh, but you know, he's still got to manage the traffic and, uh, and keep the car underneath him. Really, a tremendous job by Tiago, and that's a great point. I mean, this the strategy could have could have gone completely haywire if he. Uh, Got caught up with some traffic or made a mistake, but he's, he's kept it on track, kept it clean. Yeah, yeah, it would have taken only one mistake, and particularly this type of traffic. Of course, he might have been set up uh, with making a mistake of uh, being able to dive into the pits or something like that. Uh, and any, at any rate, looking good for him at the moment. So the battle right now is for P2 between Johnston and Parsons. And this is the battle for the second spot on the podium. Johnson got his first podium last week at Bathurst, finishing third. Parsons has his teammate right ahead of him, so his teammate most, most certainly uh, let him by without problem. Johnson heavy on the brakes. A little bit of wheel spin on exit. Parsons gonna get a nice toe from his teammate just not going to be possible to, to rattle Aaron, that's for sure. Uh, and it's not likely Aaron's going to make a mistake. Uh, Nick is going to have to get it done with a, a clean pass. Got about a minute to go. Johnson, you can tell he's really trying to get get all that power of that Panos early. And cars in all kinds of swapping. Canola looks to take the checkered flag. I believe it'll be this lap. Oh, one more to go. We'll jump back on with Parsons. Looks like uh, Nick uh, Johnson has lost a little bit of time to uh, to Aaron, but again, we got some more lap traffic up ahead. Yeah, and so you know, this is a. Uh, important fight, you know, the second place here, uh, these guys uh, obviously want to finish as high as they can, but for Aaron and Tiago, you know, we have championship points to consider as well. 
Um, so the, those positions important for those points uh, also. Uh, Aaron looking to pick up some points uh, on Chris Moses here and take over that second spot in the overall championship. So uh, yeah, there's important stuff in this uh, last lap. Oh, we still got another lap left here to go. Oh, still another one, huh? As Tiago keep is the tension and uh, ratchet it up. Yeah, as Tiago is dealing with some heavy lap traffic ahead. Yeah, he'll play it pretty cool with a six and a half second lead here. He uh, may not even choose to try to get through those guys at all. And Johnston just really hasn't had, not had a look at Parsons. This hasn't been close enough to take a look for a pass. Yeah, Aaron's just uh, un pretty unflappable in these positions. He's just not going to uh, give up anything. He, he will even sacrifice a tenth or two to make sure that he's uh, running that's perfectly it. clean lines, and that's it. Tiago Canola wins it. Another brilliant uh, race strategy. Parsons will take second. Johnston, another third place. Looks like David Pohl's going to take the fourth position. His teammate So Lung should finish in fifth. Chris Moses, as you mentioned, got ahead of uh, Joe LaCour, and Joe LaCour really pushing. One last dash there for uh, that sixth spot, but Chris hangs on. Curtis, eighth. Mikey Monahan jumped up to ninth. Christian Hamilton in the top ten. And that's it. Those are the last guys on the lead lap. Well, that was a pretty thrilling uh, strategy there by uh, Tiago once again finishing this race on that type of strategy. Six, six seconds ahead of second place. But it worked out for him. You know, this guy will start to be accumulating weight uh, that will begin to affect that, uh, that Porsche. We know he is good on weight. However, uh, you can only overcome so much uh, with a low-powered car. And you know, maybe he'll be able to employ some sort of uh, strategy next week to, uh, to get him up there again. But... Uh, and any, at any rate, great race for him tonight. Uh, good stuff. Congratulations, Tiago. Well, that's a strategy that we haven't really seen too much here at NAGP. You know, it's, uh, that's actually the first we've seen of it. Well, you know what made it work was a really nice opening pace. Uh, Tiago able to run uh, high 01s there to, to start the race. Uh, and you'd think that uh, you'd have to be a little bit slower to, than that to be able to uh, get those tires all the way around this this type of track for an hour. But um, he was able to make that uh, the pace he needed. Obviously, uh, he had six seconds in the bag, and he made it work. Um, so <laughs> we'll see what happens next week. I'm uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. We'll have to see if guys start. Uh to employ that type of strategy going forward here at NAGP, especially in GT2. You know, it's working for him. Well, well, one thing's for sure, uh, some of these guys toward the front that expect to battle him uh, down the stretch will be uh, starting to cover some of those gaps a little bit more smartly, be a little bit more prepared for uh, for some of those shenanigans. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it might, might be strategy adjustments uh, up and down the uh, paddock for these guys, yeah. So P2, we got Aaron Parsons, and another great, great finish, great pit stop as usual from him. Uh, once again, Nick Johnson, a little, little too much time in the pit lane. That Panos is fast, but 
Spends a lot of time in the pits, and the uh, we saw again here tonight. Lost uh, lost some ground to uh, to Canola and uh, Parsons. Yeah, and you know, had he not lost that ground out, he would uh, it would have been very nip and tuck between him and Tiago. In fact, I think Nick probably would have had Tiago. He certainly had the pace on Aaron down the stretch uh, until he started to over overdrive a little bit trying to catch Aaron. But uh, yeah, different race if Nick doesn't have that uh, mistake there, almost getting into the pit lane. Well, that's going to do it here tonight from Golden Port. I want to thank everybody who tuned in on another uh, great night, and I want to thank Brad for uh, for his help back in the uh, back in the booth here with me this week, and hopefully going forward. So uh, let's see where are we at next week. Next uh, next Zoo High. Oh, Zoo High. I believe that's our first visit to Zoo... No, maybe not. It may be our first visit to Zoo High in GT2. Ah, actually, I think it's our second. But regardless, we'll be at Zoo High... I'm sorry, the week of the 9th. Next week is the week of the uh, 4th of July here in the States, so we will have a off week next week, and we'll be back in two weeks from tonight from Zoo High. So hopefully you guys can join us then. And once again, thanks, Brad, for uh, joining me, and congratulations to Tiago... Aaron Parsons and Nick Johnson for their podium finishes. And we'll see you in a couple weeks.